Aloha gang, thanks for joining us for another edition of Chicken Skin Moments with Pastor Dan. Cool stuff I found in the Bible that I thought you might like. This one comes from a video I saw years ago, and you've probably seen similar things to this. It was a date, debate between a, um, a biblical creationist versus a scientific evolutionist. And you're probably aware of the debate and what does Genesis, the book of Genesis, say about creation? And can we make it jibe with what evolutionists are telling me? And the creationist guys, and by the way, bless their hearts, I think they're great people and I think they're very smart. They, they give us some really good information. But they sometimes say things like, well, the fifth day, as it is described in Genesis, is clearly um, related to the, let's just call it the Cambrian era of 8 billion years ago or whatever. I don't remember the details. And they kind of try to make the creation Genesis account fit with what modern science is discovering about the creation of the world. And I kind of say, well, all well and good with that. But what I want to submit to you today is I don't actually think that is the purpose of the book of Genesis. And I want to read you a quote that spoke to me the other day, got me thinking about this. And it says this, the first human question is not how did this come into being or even how does it all work? The first human question is what does all this mean and what am I to do about it? And I really believe that is more to the point of Genesis because the book of Genesis it tells us such great things about why things are the way they are. And it explains this world we live in so well and why this world can be so frustrating for us. I mean, the very first line in Genesis is God, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Well, in the beginning, there was a God and he created everything. Now, we kind of all get the sense that there is a higher power, a transcendent being. And the Bible says, why, yes, there is. But then it also describes why this life can be so frustrating. Because in the first two chapters, it describes how beautiful everything was. Our relationship with God was perfect. Our relationship with our spouse, the only other human on the planet, was so good. And by the way, did you know that the Genesis teaches that we were made by relationship? God says, let us, plural, make man in our image. It's a picture of the Trinity because God is a Trinity. He's the God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit. They have a perfect relationship. We were made by relationship for relationship, relationship with God, relationship with each other. And for a very, very short period, it's only the first two chapters in the Bible, it was all so good until we messed it up. And of course, we messed it up through an act of sin or whatever you want to call it. It was a selfish act. We wanted to be like God. We wanted to do things for ourselves. And in doing so, we broke our relationship with God and with each other, which at the time was just Adam and Eve. But look at how perfectly that sums up all of our lives. We all desperately desire peace in our life. And what that means is peace before God, not this relationship where maybe have I sinned? Do I need to ask for forgiveness? Oh good, God provides it, but why do I sin? And I do dumb stuff and it makes me feel guilty before God. But also we have this situation with relationships, whether it's a relationship with your, your father, your mother, your brother, your sister, your friends, or more importantly, perhaps your spouse, you desire to be in good relationships with people. And when those relationships get broken, what happens? We suffer. And the reason why we suffer is because all of us desire basically to go back to Genesis chapter 1 and 2 when everything was so good. Now, the great thing about Genesis is not only does it describe what the problem is, why we desire to go back to the garden, as it were, but it also begins to give hints that God is not going to leave us in this state, but it gives us hope that he is going to solve this problem for us. And isn't it amazing that the whole rest of the Bible, look how big this is. It's only in the first chapter. It doesn't give the problem, but the whole rest of the Bible is this amazing plan that God instituted by sending his son to come die for our sins and give us hope for a future where we're going to get to literally, quite literally, go back to the garden. That's another lesson for another time, but it's really cool. And it also informs us now how we can live in this broken world that we live in, in this broken state, in a way that helps us be restored first to God and to each other. But all of that is contained there in the book of Genesis. And so, is the book of Genesis a good you know, resource to inform us about the physical creation of the world? I suppose so. 
But I would submit to you this, it's not actually the best part of Genesis or perhaps even its most intended meaning. Anyways, hope that helps you read the book of Genesis maybe in a new and more informative light. And I've got more really cool stuff. Hope you enjoyed that one. Hey gang, thanks for watching. Make sure you hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, you know, tell your friends, uh, write your congressman, whatever you got to do. But thanks for watching the video. You're going to want to check out this next video as well. And other than that, we'll see you next time. God bless.